Have the Prog guys been pulling the wool over our eyes? And can you really trust a lot of the YouTube gear demos? We're going to answer both of them, Metal Base Monday. So if you're new to the channel, uh, I've seen a new influx recently, so thanks to the new viewers, and please like, subscribe, and share. Hit the bell, hit notifications to make sure you actually see the videos as they come up. And coming up here, uh, I'm not sure if it's going to be next week or the week following, but I'm going to send out a message. Uh, we're going to do a Metal Base Monday Live. I'll live stream it and basically do an AMA, you can ask some questions, and we'll have a good time of it. It should be a good one. This is something I do for patrons on a regular basis, and they'll be having a new one coming up here soon, too. So if you'd like to subscribe to the channel and help out, uh, links below for Subscribestar and Patreon. And to say thanks, as always, to my subscribers. Thank you to Brooks, Carol Zimisiski, Stu Bennett, Ratbones, Marcus Orth, Power Surge 5000, Stephen Becker, TJ, Rob T, Bottom Dweller 5, Icky Ryan, Huggard, Kevin Tool, D-Rock, McCathu, and Chris. You guys are awesome, as always. Thanks so much for uh, helping out and keeping the videos going. I'll uh, have the live one notice probably within the next few days so you guys know which one to tune in for, and that'll have a replay too, so no worries if you can't join or miss it. So, with that, let's get to the first topic. Now, on a previous Metal Base Monday, we took a little bit of the mystery out of technical death metal, talked about how it was constructed and what's going on. Uh, we're going to talk about Prague and Gent on this one a little bit, and one central thing that seems to be misinterpreted, I think maybe purposefully, by some of the people writing it. But there's a lot of emphasis in both styles of music for odd time, polyrhythm, that kind of thing, very staggered, confusing rhythms. And a lot of the time you hear it called, you know, all oh, they're playing all these crazy odd meters of these polyrhythms. And the fact is, a lot of times they're not. More often than not, they're actually just playing 4-4, four, four, but they're using a couple tricks to confuse you. So the biggest trick is that they're fooling your ear because when we play in 4-4, four, four, most of the time there's a repeating phrase that goes within four beats. We'll hear like, da-da-da-da-da-da, da-da-da-da-da-da. There's, you know, something that repeats every four beats. What uh, goes on, especially in Gent, but with a lot of progressive, too, is they just create chunks of hits that don't ever repeat themselves. Or they go on a much longer staggered stream, and they're still playing in 4-4. They're just stopping and starting at very strange points. It's not really that hard. You can just have a 4-4 beat going and just stagger, start, and stop. 16th notes, and that's a big key to the sound. It's not odd time, and it's not a polyrhythm. You can just have the beat going, and da 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 it's just chopping up a couple of hits, a couple of breaks in a row. It's usually like three, space, two, space, one, space, one, space, three. It like it literally you could come up with these rhythms by just writing sixteenths across a grid and then just selectively cutting out a break here and there. Just cut a sixteenth out at random and you're going to get rhythms that sound exactly like this. A lot of people think that this is complicated, or it's a polyrhythm, or it's odd time. And it's not. So the next time you hear something like that, where it's this cha 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 it's just 4-4 four, four, very likely. Now, I'm not condemning the whole thing. You know, I listen to a lot of that type of stuff. There is some really odd time type of stuff. There are progressive bands that use incredible meters that are hard to decipher and things like that. But I find, especially like in Gent and things like that, they kind of are trying to get by on the sly by playing in 4-4 and just creating these staggered chunks of rhythm. And it's interesting to a certain degree. Here's a piece of me doing it myself.
So you can see it has its uses. Even I pull it out once in a while, but it's not polyrhythms and it's not that complicated. It's just, again, start and stop. Just keep that stutter going. And that's all there is to it. It's no big mystery, but don't let anybody tell you, oh, it's all this complicated stuff and everything. It's really not. They're just kind of fooling you. So with that mystery solved, next question. Now, I wanted to address this because, especially with a lot of the shipping restrictions being lifted and things and complications with getting stuff, I'm going to be doing a number of gear demos again. Uh, I'm sorry, that's been a little slow going, but, you know, tons of complications with getting the right things in and stuff. But there is there is a big thing and a conversation I see going around, and it's pretty justified with a lot of the YouTube gear demos, is with guys who seem to basically like everything. That everything they put on their channel is awesome, and it's super killer, and it's the best thing ever, until the next ge gear demo that they do. And after a while, you do kind of start to go, can they really like all this gear? Is all of this just the best thing ever? So it's totally valid to be a little suspicious of that. Now, I've got to take that back, and I want to be as transparent as possible and explain to you why you won't see a lot of negatives here on the channel. Uh, one is, I just don't have time. Uh, if there's a piece of gear that... I really just don't think is that great, or that somebody asked me to review and I'm just not into it, I'm not going to do it. I just, I don't have any desire to, especially when I'm putting together hopefully a good demo, I generally write like a bass solo or some kind of performance to go in it. And it's not always easy. You know, you, you try to come up with something and then you got to perform the parts and then you got to record it well and make sure it shows off the gear. And I also try and make it something that I feel like will bring out the best in the gear. That, you know, what do I hear? What type of ideas when I play through this unit? That takes some time, and it takes some investment. And if it's just a piece of junk that I really don't like, that's totally uninspiring, I just don't have it in me to do that type of stuff. Now, I've seen some channels where they'll give, you know, really super honest reviews, and they'll also tear apart a piece of gear. And I guess that has some value. You know, it can warn you away from gear that just isn't that great or something. But I just don't have the time for it. I don't have the desire for it. And it's also just, I don't know, for me, it just seems like bad relations, too. I, I don't need to badmouth a piece of gear just to kind of tell people that I'm not interested in it. Now, the other main points are that I don't really play or demo a piece of gear that I'm not interested in myself. If you see a piece of gear on this channel and I'm demoing it, I use it. I'm showing it off because one, I feel that because I use it or it's new to my arsenal, that I've investigated it enough. I didn't get it in the door and got some money to do it. And then 20 minutes later, I'm throwing out a demo of it. I've actually put time into trying to find out what it's capable of and show some interesting things that you might not see in other demos. The other part is, I'm also selective about the companies I work with and I choose to associate myself with. Any company that you see on this channel, and there's a, a clause to this, uh, I'll get to that in a minute, but any company you see on this channel are people I genuinely think are good people and trying to have a business and do right by the musicians. If I don't think that they're doing that, or if I don't believe in them, not only as music uh, in instrument makers, as well as a company and people, I'm not interested either. There have been pieces of gear I've had in the past that are actually easier for me to get my sound through that I just, I won't play it or represent it. I'd rather go the extra length and work with people I like. Thankfully now, the people that I am working with uh, at a number of different companies, make killer gear, and they're killer people, and my sound is the best I've heard it. So, you know, you've seen probably stuff from Tech 21, uh, more of that coming up, EMG, Schecter, AMT, which you're going to see a ton of soon, as soon as it can get through customs. <laughs> so, all that coming up. But 
I like the people who run these companies and believe in what they're trying to do and respect their innovation as much as I like the quality and sound of what they do. So when I show off a piece of gear, I'm demoing not just its sound capability, but showing you a business that I think deserves your business. So that's why on my channel, even though I just kind of said be suspicious of channels where you don't hear a lot of bad, you know, that everything just sounds good, you're not going to see a ton of bad reviews from me. I don't, I never say never. There may be something where I just go, this is outrageous and people are being conned and I feel the need to say something, but I kind of doubt it. One thing that you can probably pick up though is, you know, it's just as valid to pay attention to who I don't review and what I don't show an interest in as the gear I review. It should probably tell you a lot. Uh, now, as time goes by, that can also change as well because, you know, people at companies change or relationships, you know, reveal themselves to not be what you originally thought. And I've actually got a couple of gear demos from years ago on the channel from people that I would rather not promote at this point. I'm very seriously thinking of taking them down because things have changed or I don't think that their business practices are the best. But... If that happens, or if you ask me honestly about a piece of gear, one, I'm never going to slander a piece of gear just because I don't like the company. If they make a good product, I'm not going to lie about it. But at the same time, at a certain point, I'm just going to make it clear I don't care to have an association or I won't buy from them any further because I just don't find them to be working in the artist's interest or... I just don't like some things that they're doing publicly or ethically or whatever the case may be. So I'm going to be as transparent as possible, but I'm not going to sit on here and slander businesses and, you know, that type of thing. I'm not interested in it. So you're absolutely right to be skeptical if you see a lot of positive reviews out of people. But I hope that my being transparent in that way helps you understand why you're not going to see a lot of bad reviews, why you're not going to see me slander a lot of people. But I will be honest about things if they change. And when I do give a glowing review, it's because I like the piece of gear. And as you've seen on my channel, and I stand by this, anything you've seen me review that I say I absolutely love, you still see me playing it here on Metal Base Monday in my other demos and that kind of thing. So I think my honesty is going to show on that. And uh, let me know your thoughts on that. Would you rather somebody come out and say it like it is, and show you some stuff that they really find fault with. Uh, as far as that goes, I've only had two times that I've refu refused to do a review. Uh, one was a piece of gear that it was fine, but it was just so not something I would ever use. I just couldn't get inspired by it, and I just didn't think I would represent it well, and I gave it back and said, I don't I, I don't do this. I, I just, I, I'm not going to show this to its fullest potential. And the other was I got asked to do a review by somebody and I really did not like their business and refused to do it and told them I didn't want to be approached again. So it's happened twice and that's not a lot. I don't get approached just randomly for gear on a regular basis. It's usually through people I'm already working with or from somebody that I already have a connection to and they have a new line or something, something like that. So again, hit me up in the comments. Does that make sense to you? What are your thoughts on a channel and how they should handle things ethically as far as saying what they believe about a company or just keeping their mouth shut? I try and keep it up on here a little bit. Uh, I'm more interested in calling out industry BS than I am some pedal, I just don't find it that interesting. So that's my take on it. Now, on a final note, as far as that type of gear, what really helps, and if you want to see me review a piece of gear or demo it for you, is let these companies know in their comments section. When you see a bass or, a, you know, pickup gear, pedal, whatever it is, and you'd like to see me demo it or like to see what my impression of it might be, Tell these companies that you want to see that done. Hit them up on Instagram, on Facebook, respond to their ads. 
because that does the most for them. When they see an actual market of people that want to see something from a specific person, or they see that people interested in a certain style of music or a certain performer want that guy to start handling things, that says a lot more than me approaching them or them just trying to stumble over new people to work with. So if you do see that, let me know that you've got an interest or something that you're curious about, but also let the company know. It goes a long way and it really helps. And I'll do the best I can to make good informative demos for you that are as complete as I can do them and are going to cover all your questions and give you some good sound samples. And finally, if you saw last week, we did a bass tone overhaul for one of my patron supporters, TJ. That's open to everybody. Patrons go first in the queue, but please send in your sound. If you're trying to find your dream sound or you have something that you are really after, but your gear right now just isn't cutting it or you don't know how to get from where you are to where that ultimate sound is, send in a video clip. Just send a link, please no files, and you want to send it to rodney at rodneymcg.com. I'll take it, figure out how to get your sound from where it is to where you want it to be. I'll play your video and your sound clip here on the show, and we'll diagnose it live and in real time for you and get you that information that you need as far as gear or sound choices, that kind of thing. Uh, you'll also get the community who can always jump in in the comments and help you figure it out too. So it's not just my advice. You never know how many people with infinite gear resources and using different items might have just the right thing for you or something that is a rare item that they know about a specific player's tone that you're chasing and they might be able to really nail it for you. So big audience, send in those clips and let's see what we can do for you. So that's going to wrap it up for this Metal Base Monday. Thanks so much, as always, for watching. Send in those clips. Hit me up in the comments with your thoughts about what we covered and uh, about progressive stuff, too. And I'll be on the comments section or send out a uh, community alert to let you know when that live one's going to come up. I hope to see you there, and I will see you on the next one. Wait! Don't go! You never know. Moments like this are crucial. The next video you watch could change your life. And it might be this one, or even this one. Are you willing to take that chance? I don't know. Check them out.